Well, welcome everybody. Good morning. It is great to be here this morning and so glad you could join us. 
If you are watching on Facebook, make sure that you give us plenty of comments, plenty of likes, plenty of love. If you're also watching on YouTube, then make sure you subscribe so then you are up to date with all our video posts and uh, everything else. So right. what's happening this week, Kayla? So this week, you are in for a treat. We have Tuesday night prayer, which will be amazing because it always is. God always speaks to us and encourages us, so uh, don't miss it. And uh, later on in the week, on Friday night, we have a session on marriage. Mm. And that's going to be hosted by Jez and Kate with the lovely Robin Annie Sherwin. Woo! So that is one not to miss. That will be on Facebook and YouTube. And today, what's happening? Well, Jez <clears throat> is continuing um, our series on contentment. So that's been really speaking to me. Yeah. Especially if it's been speaking to you, you need to watch that. So stay tuned. Um, then also kids, um, you will have noticed that we have been posting um, videos and games and teaching for you. So make sure that you watch that. Um, I believe it's available on Facebook and YouTube. No, nope, just on Facebook. So make sure that you are up to date on that. That is every single Sunday. What a blessing. Great. Okay, so now we are going to take up our offering and tithes. So the details should be on the screen and I'm going to pray. So Lord, we just thank you for your goodness. We thank you that you are generous towards us as your people. Yes, you are, Lord. And I pray that you'd give us an even more generous spirit than we already have mm -hmm. and that we'd be known as a people of generosity. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. Good morning, Kefili. I hope you're ready to worship the Lord this morning. Well, we are anyway, aren't we? Yes. Hallelujah. Let's worship the Lord. Yeah. 
Hebrews 10 verse 23 to 25. Let us hold on firmly to the hope we profess, because we can trust God to keep his promise. Let us be concerned for one another, to help one another, to show love and to do good. Let us not give up beating together as some are doing. Instead, let us encourage one another all the more. Since you see that, the day of the Lord is coming near. Well, good morning, everyone. It is great to have you with us today. It's great to have these wonderful people here this morning as well. Uh, thank you for being with us. We have been learning over the last few weeks about what it is to be content in all circumstances. Praise God. In Philippians chapter 4, Paul said that he had learned the secret of what it was to be content in all circumstances. And we've been learning that contentment in all circumstances is not found in the desired destination. It's not found in the absence of problems, but it's found in a life surrendered to Christ and built upon his word. Praise God. We said last week that as we get into the Word and as the Word gets into us, we grow. We grow in our faith and in our trust in Him, which means that I don't need to live afraid of tomorrow. We grow in our understanding of His unfolding plan and purpose for this world, which means that I don't need to panic at every news headline that I read. We grow in our conviction that we really do belong to a kingdom that is unshakable. So in a world where everything is shaking, as God's people, we can stand firm. Now the Bible tells us that faith comes by hearing the word. So it's important that we listen. And in a world where we are bombarded with voices, I want to be someone that listens to God's word. I want to be someone that listens to his voice over everything else. We finished our time last week by looking at how the Word of God is trustworthy and eternal. And today we're just going to read through a few scriptures um, that continue to look at this. And then I've got two really good testimonies from two friends of mine uh, who have seen the power of this in their own lives. So we're going to turn to a few scriptures first. Isaiah chapter 55, reading from verse 10 to 12, says this. As the rain and the snow come down from heaven and do not return to it without watering the earth and making it bud and flourish so that it yields seed for the sower and bread for the eater, so is my word that goes out of my mouth. It will not return to me empty, but will accomplish what I desire and achieve the purpose for which I sent it. You will go out in joy and be led forth in peace. So as the rain comes down, and we know a lot about rain in Wales because it rains here a lot, 
that as the rain comes down and does not return but achieves that for which it was sent, so too does God's word not return to him but accomplish its purpose. Let's just read a couple more verses. Numbers chapter 23 verse 19. God is not human that he should lie, not a human being that he should change his mind. Does he speak and then not act? Does he promise and not fulfill? God's promises are trustworthy. I'm just going to look at a couple more verses on this. Joshua 21 verse 45. Not one of all the Lord's good promises to Israel failed. Every one was fulfilled. Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 12. The Lord said to me, I am watching to see that my word is fulfilled. So from these scriptures we learn that When God speaks, he acts. When God promises, he fulfills. His word will always accomplish what he desires and achieve the purpose for which it was sent. So when God speaks freedom, chains break. When God speaks peace into a situation, darkness flees. When he speaks healing, bodies are restored. When he speaks life, dust becomes flesh and blood. In fact, the moment that his word is spoken, that which he speaks is established. Romans chapter 4 verse 17 says, God gives life to the dead and calls into being things that are not. And so in the same way that God spoke creation into being, his word is creative and powerful. Praise God. The moment his word is spoken, that which he speaks is established. If God has given you a word saying that he will provide, you can know today that his provision is already waiting for you. If God has given you a word that your children are going to grow up strong, you can live content in the now knowing that he has already gone ahead of them. If God has said he'll open up doors of opportunity for you, You can live content in the now knowing that those doors are already opening. We are going to watch two testimonies now which explain this a little bit further and uh, great illustrations of how when God speaks you can live content even in the challenge knowing that you can trust in his word. Hi guys, my name is Annie and I just wanted to share a quick testimony with you. Jess has been talking to us recently about being content in the now and um, it's caused me to reflect I suppose on on many different times in my life where potentially emotions could have taken hold of things pressing in on our lives uh, to cause upset but um, we've learnt to be content when we have got God's word to stand on and to be able to trust him in whatever circumstance we find ourselves in. So a particular circumstance that's come to mind for me was uh, when I was pregnant with our third child, Megan. Um, God spoke to my husband in a dream and said that this next child was gonna cause sadness for us, but also the greatest joy. It's a strange word to get before you have a baby, but we did acknowledge that we believed it was from God. And so we wrote it down and then we promptly forgot about it. But 17, 16, 17 years later, Megan announced to us as a family that she no longer wanted to be part of the church, that she no longer wanted to walk with God, and that she just wanted to go off and do her own thing. It was hard for us um, as parents to hear her say that, and certainly hard for me as a mother Um, and it initially created created a lot of emotion in me, um, feeling like I'd failed, uh, feeling um, that I'd done something wrong. Uh, Oh, lots, lots of emotions would have overcome me had I not remembered the word that God had spoken all those years before, before Megan was even born which was, yes, she would bring sadness, but she would always also bring us the greatest joy. And all of a sudden, I had 
had something to stand on. I had something that would bring contentment and peace in a situation that potentially could have caused constant upset and turmoil as I watched my child make poor decisions and damage herself in various different ways by the decisions that she was making. But what I did find was that I had a word that I could stand on, that I could trust God in, that I could go to the Lord with, um, that I could confess and believe. And I knew, and I still know today, how faithful God is if you trust him. And so five years went by. Uh, Megan had travelled to many places. Uh, there'd been lots of different events that had gone on during that time and every time something happened that potentially could have caused upset and rocked us we went back to that word Lord she's going to bring us the greatest joy so we were fine as a, a couple we were fine as a mother I was fine during those five years at peace and content and then uh, when Megan was about 21, 22, and visiting her brother in America. I had a text from her one day saying, Mum, Dad, today I went to church and I've recommitted my life to the Lord. Now I'm eating a burrito. How is your day going? And that was her way of telling us that she was no longer making decisions for herself, but that she'd recommitted her life to God. And oh my gosh, how happy were we and how thankful to God that all those years before, before she was even born, he spoke a word to us about her life and he was faithful in bringing her right through to that place where she was bringing us the greatest joy. Megan now lives in America and is married to an amazing man of God and has a beautiful boy of her own. And now she's learning to be a parent and how to be content and trust God and stand on his word. So I just want to encourage you guys, whatever is pressing in on you, whatever emotions are being created in you, and please understand me, it's not wrong to have emotions. I think Lydia said it the other day, it's not wrong to have emotions. God created us with emotions. But when emotions um, rule us, when they um, overcome us, when they press in on us in such a way that they immobilize us, that's not God's heart for us. And so let me encourage you, stand on God's word. He is a faithful God. He will bring contentment in peace into any situation that you may face. And Jez reminded us again that in Isaiah 26 verse 3, it says, You will keep in perfect peace those whose minds are steadfast because they trust in you. Thanks for listening, guys. Hi to our church family in Kefili. It's good to be with you and to share with you about how God has sustained us through a recent time of trial. Uh, back in March, our daughter Phoebe was born. And uh, the moment we found ourselves alone, uh, Bonnie and I prophesied over her. And the overwhelming sense that we had for her was that she would be a light in the darkness, hope to the lost, that she would conquer evil with good. Hence Phoebe, which actually means bright. But within five hours of her birth, Phoebe had stopped breathing. And uh, had Bonnie not awoken at 3 a.m. to check on her, uh, we <laughs> would not have been praying for her recently. But in December, Phoebe was having trouble breathing. And uh, what uh, was thought to be a lung infection actually uncovered a congenital heart defect that meant without prompt action there would be a catastrophic failure of some of her organs. But we found this out in the morning and that very afternoon uh, the surgeons went and performed open heart, heart surgery on her. And by the grace of God the operation was a success and after just three days, that's three days, uh, Phoebe needed no nursing support at all, just a little bit of paracetamol. Uh, there are some of you watching who know what it is to see a loved one come close to death, or even to succumb to it. And for us, the thing that upheld us was the word that was prophesied over Phoebe's life. But when first she stopped breathing, we brought that word that was spoken back to God. 
For we knew that his work does not return empty and void. In fact, God had already begun to work. For, for the same word that created and sustained the cosmos created and sustained our baby daughter. That same word that can bring life and power, can stir a mother to wake, and can guide the hands and nurses of doctors to bring healing. As we watched Phoebe, our tiny daughter, hooked up on life support machines and, and taken away for surgery, as we were left on our own and as we held each other and, and wept, our prayer, our cry was this, God, do not let your word return empty and void. And we realised what I think we'd begun to realise all along, that we were caught up in the middle of this raging spiritual battle whereby the enemy was trying to not just steal our daughter from us and from our family, but to rob the world of the potency of the word that was spoken. In our grief and in our anxiety, we met Jesus and an army of people around the world were praying for her. And in that moment, we believed the word and it was confirmed in our hearts. Phoebe is to be a light in the darkness. That word came to sustain and will continue to sustain Phoebe. That same word sustained us. But when we were talking with one of the nurses in the intensive care unit, that we were able to bring the conversation uh, to faith. Oh, you're Christians, she said. Uh, well, that explains why you've been so calm throughout this whole process. It, that word, it ministered to us with hope and with strength and with peace. I'll just leave you this, because it's, it's quite hard just to comprehend how God calls us to collaborate with him in the ruling and restoration of his world. But it was his word brought to Phoebe uh, but it was his word brought by her mother and father for me and Bonnie, and that saved her life. Had we chosen not to, uh, not to respond to the promptings of the Spirit, uh, we could be telling you a very different story today. God's word is something worth holding on to. It might just save your life or somebody else's, and in more ways than you. Uh, Bonnie and I, we really would like to personally thank you for each one that took time to pray for Phoebe, you are a huge part of the reason that she lives today. God bless, and thank you so much. We love you from the community church in Southport. Well, how amazing were those two stories? Brilliant. Harry and Annie, fantastic. Harry and Annie, fantastic, great stories. Uh, I hope you were encouraged with them. When God speaks, he acts. When he promises something, you can know that he's going to fulfill it. His word will always accomplish what he desires and achieve the purpose for which it was sent. What does that mean for us? Well, it fills us with confidence to live content in the now because if God has spoken a word over your life, there is nothing that can stand in the way of that word being fulfilled. No demon, no man, not even your own self-doubt of mistakes can stop or withhold his word from being accomplished. God will never speak to you a promise that he cannot fulfill. So I just want to encourage you guys today, whatever promise you're holding on to, whatever word that you're standing on, know that it is God's intention to fulfill that which he has spoken. Even in the face of challenge and opposition, when God speaks, it is established. Now, next time, we're going to speak to you a little bit more on how we receive his word. Because you may be sitting there this morning listening and thinking, well, I don't have a word that I'm holding on to. Well, join us next week because we're going to be looking a little bit more at how to hear God's word, how to respond to God's word, and how to claim that word for yourself. So we look forward to seeing you next week. Thanks for joining us. We will be here next week, same time. See you then. Bye.